Am I Evil by Jack Mangan. Based on Am I Evil by Brian Tatler and Sean Harris. Originally released on the album Lightning to the Nations by Diamond Head, 1980. Chapter 12 Rhea and Cliff awaited us on the shore. There were minor cracks in his ever-stoic veneer, but she looked utterly shaken, her clothes in tatters, the tracks of tears cutting the grime and soot on her face. I wanted to drop Diamond Head and pull her to me, for my own comfort as much as hers, but there remained business to attend. The rain was teeming lightly on the shore, barely of notice in the returning summer warmth. Across the beach, the stake and woodpile had clearly been lit and burned, but were extinguished now, just a trickle of rising smoke from the embers. I met Rhea's stare. My hand on Henrik's shoulder, the sword tip against the small of his back. I shoved him to his knees before her. This man's life is yours to end, Rhea. Your claim is greater than mine. Rhea looked at him with open disgust. I have no more appetite for vengeance. Dispatch him however you will. Henrik looked up in surprise, turned to look over his shoulder at me. Wait, I can... I took his head. One swift motion and it was done, toppling to the sand. Cliff arched a brow. I searched myself for some feeling of resolution, but there was none. Nothing. I didn't comprehend the emptiness until Rhea spoke again. She heaved a deep sigh, looked out over the water. It is done. I shook my head, locked eyes with Cliff. His expression hardened to stone. Not yet, I said. One last elder of good remains. Rhea's mouth fell open. I hated to see her look at me that way. But I would not relent. Could not relent. Not now. Vander, no, she said. Cliff, never. I. Cliff's voice broke. I was momentarily thrown. In all of my months with him, I'd never seen Cliff like this. I. But I suspected them and did nothing. Paralyzed by the evils of my past, I failed to protect you, Rhea. As I failed Lilith. I've committed a great number of sins in my time, but none greater than my complicity in those crimes. His eyes were rimmed red when he looked at me. I've lived a life of evil and infamy, with only fleeting joys. My twilight's hope was an honorable death at the hands of a worthy foe. That was supposed to be you, Vander. That's why I trained you after your mother's death. But you're still not ready. Your skills are far too weak. I guess I'll die of old age. I owe you my gratitude, Cliff, for the teachings in the shelter. But my vengeance must be fulfilled tonight. You idiots realize I can end this with a mere thought? Ray's tone was scolding. Death's thirst is slaked, near to drowning. I'll not allow you two to spill each other's blood. I cast a sidelong glance at Rhea. My love, this is between Cliff and me. I ask you not to intercede. I'm sorry, niece. He's right. This is necessary. Inevitable. Fine. Apparently metal rules both of your minds. Rhea's voice was pure disdain. Bang your heads together, have your duel, but I will stop the killing blow. If you're fast enough, I said, never taking my eyes off a cliff. He'd recovered his granite composure. I can't beat you in a fight, sir, it's true. But I still throw down the challenge. He scowled at me. Damn it, it's not the weapon's mastery you lack, boy. It's the fire, the will, the evil within all men. Ask yourself, Vander. I interrupted him with a diamond head lunge at his heart. The old man was still too swift, too alert for the likes of me. The blade tip grazed his chest, but he sidestepped with wolfen grace. In one motion, he drew his rapier and knocked my sword back. Am I evil? I said. I am man. Yes, I am. A smile broke on his face, which gave way to a laugh. Through all of the ups and downs of my time with him, the chores, the smithing, the combat arts, the discussions, the secret grieving, the scheming, the private hatreds, there'd been precious little laughter. Rhea threw her arms up with a disgusted noise. 
The fight nearly ended right there. His rapier was as fast as a witch's lightning. His aim was true, directly at my brow, but I ducked and flung Diamond Head in a desperate parry. In truth, the sword fight lasted only a half minute, led us across a mere dozen yards, but it felt like a lifetime of melee, carrying across distances like continents. I realized that I didn't just want to beat him, to kill him. I also wanted to impress him. I wanted him to be proud of my warfare, to find my swordsmanship worthy. I wanted to give him death, the honorable death in battle that he craved. Pathetic, he said, windmilling my blade around, nearly flinging it across the field. I jumped back a pace. Maybe when we're done, I'll spar with Henrik's severed head. That would be more of a challenge. I wanted to smile, but didn't dare. He was leading the dance. I was blocking, fainting, and thrusting, but was still being driven back. The ground beneath my feet turned from crabgrass to wooden planks. I didn't trust the tottering pier, so I jumped down to the lake surface. After a terrifying moment of windmilling arms and sliding feet, I caught my balance and remained upright, just in time to block another head slash from Cliff. Our blades clicked together a few moments more until he backed me into a frozen wave. My feet skated backwards over it, and I landed on my ass. I flung the sword up in a wild block, but no death blow came. Cliff paced on the other side of the wave, regarding me, giving me time to hastily achieve my feet again. Don't get so dazzled with the flashing steel that you forget your footing, he said. Show no mercy. I trust you to kill me if you get the chance. I will be the one to kill you, not the slippery ice underfoot. I was aware of Rhea still watching us with disdain from the shore. The chatter gave me time to stand again. Impressive touch, Rhea, freezing the lake in this heat. Oh, the lake enchantment wasn't mine. I just called the storm, she said. I can only guess that the elemental magic awoke her, and that she cast this. Cliff and I stopped and stared at her, said in unison, Woke who? Too late, we both became aware of an unnatural thrumming noise from directly beneath us. The icy lake surface exploded upward where we stood. I was tossed backward through the air, landing on a small ice sheet that tilted me into the cold lake. Every inch of submerged skin went numb. I clutched at the buoyant shelf for purchase, gasping water for my lungs. Cliff was still airborne somehow launching on an unnatural trajectory, straight upward at the sky. It took a moment to see that he was not alone. He was not alone. A skeletal fist had him by the throat. A waterlogged, ghoulish creature in long rotted skirts had its other mildewed arm around his waist. This thing seemed to be propelling them both upward. Cliff emitted a strangled cry. With a shout, Rhea leapt from her place on the shore, floated the great distance over the splintering ice, and came down at the frozen lip nearest me, just a few yards away. It had been like a slow-motion, long-distance jump. She crouched with a pained expression and extended her hand, looking back and forth from me to the horrific scene above. I leapt toward her, though the few strokes was near enough for her to pull me up. I rolled onto my back on the stable sheet, to catch my breath, shivering, looked directly up into the scene of horror overhead. They'd stopped their ascent and were hovering, the creature's choking grip still strong around Cliff's neck and back. He struggled, could find no break in the hold. The thing drew its face intimately close to his and screamed. No, no, it wasn't a scream, but a laugh, a shrill cackle with no trace of humanity. My breath stopped again. Mother? Rhea spoke with hushed awe, shook her head. Lilith didn't die properly. Now she sleeps undead in the lake. My magic has disturbed her slumber. She reached for me and I sat up, grasped her trembling hand in mine. My dead mother's touch, or her necromancy, or her mere presence, was having a grisly effect on Cliff. His patchy iron-gray hair began to thin and bleach white. His forged hand skin blanched sickly pale. His stout muscle sank callow into his neck, his arms, his chest. He was too far aloft for me to read his expression, 
They could only see the widening O of his mouth, the blackness within, hear his strangled cry, diminishing to an extended gasp. My mind screamed to look away, but my eyes remained fixed on the vivid horror. You always did crave my touch, Cliff. The witch laughed again. Though much of its face was reduced to discolored skull, with only weed-like wisps of white blonde hair on its pate, I knew this bloodless thing was my mother, locked in a watery death life. Only she could be so malicious, so cruel. The body of my mentor had become unrecognizable in her clutch, a withered, mummified husk in the shape of a man. She made a disgusted noise, tossed him absently away like a rotted cornstalk. He fell straight downward toward the pool that had opened up in the frozen lake ice. But as always, your amusement quickly fades. He hit and sank with a splash. The fog bank encroached and came to a halt, floating out over the break in the ice and shrouding against the lich's back. She remained levitating above us, watching the ripple circle out over Cliff's Lake Silence grave. My legs found my courage first. I stood without a word let the steel sound of unsheathing diamond head speak for me. My mother looked down, seemed to notice us for the first time. Vander, Vander, Vander. Still pathetic. Still my greatest shame. I raised the sword in response, pointed at her. Before I could shout in defiance, she waved a dismissive flick of her skeleton fingers. A jagged, blinding bolt of blue surged forth, drawn to diamond head like a lightning rod. I convulsed in the most terrible pain imaginable, paralyzed, unable to cry out for eternal seconds. The sword flung from my grasp, and I was launched backwards again, hitting the ice and sliding for some distance. I'm fairly sure that Rhea called my name, but I can't be certain. The next moments were a blur. I saw, felt, heard, thought nothing, until the cold touch of fingers on my cheek brought me back. Rhea's face, close to mine, eyes brimming with fear. My ears were wet with blood. A ceaseless high-pitched note rang above all other sounds. You awoke her, I said to Rhea, unsure how loud I was even speaking. The thing that had been my mother remained in midair, watching us. Too much of its face was gone to read expressions. But I knew her. It was gloating, toying with us. Can you send her back to the lake bottom? She shook her head, glancing back for a half second. I don't know how. Her evil is beyond either of us. But not beyond me. A man's authoritative voice cut through the din. Horse rider silhouettes appeared at the edge of the fog. You're listening to the audiobook of Am I Evil? Based on the Am I Evil novella. Based on the Am I Evil graphic novel. Based on the classic heavy metal song. Written and made famous by Diamond Head and famously covered by Metallica and later covered live by the Thrash Big Four of Metallica, Anthrax, Slayer, and Megadeth. Narration by me, Jack Manga, the author of the graphic novel and the novella. All the legal stuff here, you know, you can't sell recordings or transcripts of this, blah, blah, blah. We're running an Indiegogo campaign in June 2023 to raise funds to produce high-quality print versions of the Am I Evil graphic novel, with cover art by James F. Beveridge, and all interior comic panel art and lettering by Kyle Burles, a.k.a. Kyohazard. Please swing over to Indiegogo and support our campaign to receive your own print and or PDF edition of the Am I Evil comic. And the ebook of this novella will also be available separately. Or for purchase information or just general information about Am I Evil, check us out at amievil-graphicnovel.com. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Indiegogo supporters.